know what time it is. Welcome to That Watch Guy London, episode two. And I've got a special guest here. Are we ready to go, guys? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Alex Gray, your Royal Flush crew member. WPT UK is back. Welcome to Russia. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. My, my name is Alex Gray. Um, thank you for having me, Spencer. On You're welcome on that Watch Guy London podcast. Um, a number of years ago, you worked for us at um, BQ Watches. I didn't know you? I did. It's so strange how it's come around like this. Yeah, when, when I was just a, a mean, um, a meager little 18, 19 year old. When I first started university, I was hostessing and. I was handing out goodie bags, I think, on That's your right. stool. <laughs> um, we were at IJL London and yeah. Alex was there just handing out bags and trying to get customers to the stand. But a lot of the time, they're more interested in Alex than they were in our watches. Maybe. I think I was quite a good salesperson back yeah, then, you've though. you done very well. Yeah, yeah, I think I did sell yeah. a few a few watches for Absolutely. you guys. Absolutely. So I'm Alex, still waiting for that commission, but you know. Uh, we're, we're, <laughs> we'll see what we can do. So what have you been up to, Alex? Before COVID hit, I was traveling a lot. Um, I was traveling with the World Poker Tour. Going all around the world and, and following following all these poker tournaments basically. And I know you're a big poker fan. Yeah, absolutely. Been I to Vegas it. a few times. Of course, of course. Have you have you ever played in a tournament? I've never played in the World Poker Tour. I've played a few cash games, you know, the Bellagio, the Win, all of those places. But yeah, it's great. What's your great. what's your favourite style? No limit hold'em. Um, yeah. Yeah. No limit hold'em. Yeah. I mean we play every week with a group of guys locally. We play Texas. Uh, we mix it up. What do you put? What's what's at stake? A few watches? Um, they asked me to put in a few watches. I'm happy just to pay for the usual stakes. The plastic chips. Yeah, yeah so, so for so that do way. do you play? I do play, yeah. So actually during lockdown, when it first came around, I was playing a lot online. Because yeah. we had a big on, everything went online. Obviously, sure. all the live events got cancelled. Sure. Because, sure. you know, in a casino sure. or a poker room, it's like you can't really socially yeah. distance. Well, back then, at least. It's all changed now. But yeah, so I was kind of practicing my my online game, but I much prefer the in person. I like the chat. I find some of the online games we play, there's a group of us who play like home games, and some of the things that happen, the bad beats, the one outers, it just it's ridiculous. Mm. It's ridiculous. It's not the same. It's but... not the same. I mean, like it is good. Like you can really grind it out and you know, you're in the comfort of your own home and but I feel like for someone, I don't know, like us, we, we we want the fun of it. You know, we want the fun of the dynamic of being at the live event and all the people. And, and you when know, you look in someone's eyes and you see. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can really kind of get into like the psychological aspect of it, which is my favorite Absolutely. part. All the hats and the glasses. And... Yeah, but I don't know if you've noticed. I've watched a lot of the videos, obviously. Um, and fun, on YouTube, a lot of like the m- most viewed videos are from back in the day, like the old school poker videos like with um with tony g and phil helmuth and tom dwan and they've got millions of views these videos and a lot about a lot of people who don't even know anything about poker are watching these videos and that's because back then there was so much chat at the table there were so many big personalities but what's now happened in the poker world is that the players have clocked on that the quieter you are and the more you cover yourself the towers were given away Exactly. So the more kind of robotic you are and the more you kind of tune into the algorithms and the probability, not the algorithms, but the probabilities um, and the maths at stake, the more... Sure. more So they just put their headphones on, put the caps on. And it's all very boring now. (laughs) I mean, it's, it's better for them in regarding their play. But at the same time, for the viewers, it's not it's not so entertaining. It's nowhere near like yeah. yeah. You know. So how playing. long have you been doing this for? How long have you been? I feel like I've been doing it forever. But, um, so I start my first gig was 2018 July in San Remo in Italy. Um, so yeah. what was that? The European tour? No, it's all World Poker Tour. It's all World Poker. Tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and they've been great. I mean, it's, it's they're awesome companies to work for. I've had honestly through the best two years ever. Where's the World Poker Tour taking you? Where hasn't the World Poker Tour taken okay, me? Really? Yeah, honestly, it has been a whirlwind of the last two years. Because um, it's all over. So I've been to Cambodia, been to Russia. I mean, Russia's one of my favourite countries ever. Really? I, I love the yeah. Russians. Yeah. Um, the States, been to the Caribbean, um, Marrakesh, all over Europe. 
Amazing. Just yeah. not really, not really Africa. Mar- Morocco is the only African country. Obviously, on the tour, you must have seen guys with loads of different watches. What I mean, do you have a passion for watches? Have you? I mean. I love an I love a nice watch. I will always notice when someone has a nice watch on, but I will be oh I will be the first to admit that I'm not definitely not an expert. I think the most I ever learned about watches was working for you right. that week. Um, but yeah, no, on in poker they they love their watches because it's all hand action, right? So if you're sure. flashing a nice Everyone watch, showing off, yeah, it's yeah. showing off. You like you like oh it's a it's a shark at the table. They have got a nice watch on. Sure. Um, but the World Poker Tour is sponsored by Hublot, so we see. There's a lot of nice Hublot watches around. And the winners of, we have a big event called the Tournament of Champions. They all win a $15,000 Hublot watch Amazing. as part of their prize. Yeah, wow. which is wow. pretty cool. Wow. Um, but I've noticed that a lot of these watches have some funny names. <laughs> like, sure, sure. Like superhero names. Yeah. And I never really and understood why. Is, um, they're sort of slang names. I mean, they're not ones that come from Rolex. There we go. There's the Pepsi. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Well, it all makes sense now. We're looking at the colors. I've got the classic blue and red. So I'm right in thinking that it's not Rolex themselves that have named no, this. No, it's a slang name that's been given over time. Because of the colors, people have called that the Pepsi. Right, OK. And what about the Coke, then? Oh, yeah, the real thing. Coke, Coke, Coke. Oh, well, there we go. I guess that makes sense. I don't know if, if you'll be able to see. See or at home through the camera, but um, with this distance, but yeah, the classic black and so red. So it's the GMT Coke and the GMT Pepsi. Mm, very nice. Which one's your favourite? Um, I actually prefer the pe- I prefer the blue. Yeah, the I was gonna say I, I like the Pepsi, yeah. but I prefer the Coke as a drink. So absolutely, I don't never drink Pepsi actually. And nowadays the they've, they've brought out a new version of this with the Jubilee bracelet. I haven't got that here today, but it's a newer version of this with a ceramic bezel and so when, So now that the newer version has been brought out, ah, very does that mean that that will have gone down in price? Or? Very interesting that actually, Alex. You would think so. As with a car over time, when a new version comes out, the older version decreases in value. Ah, not, <laughs> not the case with Rolex. Okay. So what do you think happens? Well, the weather goes up. They go up because they are now more rare. They've been discontinued. Anything in Rolex that gets discontinued becomes more valuable. This is why the collectors now have realised the pattern. It's going back to our poker days. So poker, people are looking for patterns. So people have now established patterns that With Rolex, when, when discontinued... When they discontinue something, it goes up in value. So everyone is trying to work out what is going to be discontinued. So there they can buy it and they know it's going to go up. So are there any instances, because I know I've got a lot of guy friends that will buy watches as an investment, Mm. but are there any uh, instances where actually the price goes down? Rolex, Rolex is generally a brand that hold their money and with price increases over time, you will generally get your money back and more on most of their watches. Whereas we have other brands that become less popular and the Mm. markup of the shops is quite great. So what with margin and profit, so you'll have some brands now where they might only be worth 20, 30% of the retail price. A watch that you may see around Vegas at times, like a Frank Muller, going back to 05, 08, 2010, was hugely popular. A real lump, chunky piece yeah. with bracelets. <laughs> and now, not nearly as popular. So again, because the demand's not there and the watches, there are still watches, the value has gone down because they bring new models out, but nowhere near as popular as they used to be. Whereas here, the Coke and Pepsi that we've spoken about, although discontinued, the old ones are still, I mean, back in the day, they were selling for two, three thousand pounds, going back to early 2000s. Which is and nothing, really. Now they're eight to 10,000 pounds. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's a good investment yeah, then. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So Alex, let me tell you about another watch, the Kermit. The Kermit, oh my God. It's not easy. Being green. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what is this wizardry? Um, wow, this is beautiful. Although, it's, why is it being called the Kermit? That, it could literally the... be called anything. It's just a green ring. That was referred to as the Kermit. That was the name that was given. 
By who though? Who decided public, to call this colour? The public have named um, <laughs> Rolex. So that was a bit aggressive. Rolex called that the fiftieth anniversary. Yeah. Right. That was the anniversary sub, which was out in two thousand and seven. Which is the reference to that is the one double six ten LV, and the public what does that just. Mean? The 16610 is a Submariner, and they've all got different reference numbers as they change them. They okay. then change them to a 116610. Kind of like the iPhone had... 8, the iPhone 9. Correct. Kind of like... So the later one had a ceramic bezel, but this watch has not changed over 20, 30 years. I mean... Yeah, I feel like I've seen this watch quite it's... a lot. Well, it's been about... I think this was on your branding when I worked here. Correct. You. Yeah, Correct. yes, yeah, yeah. I remember these Again, things. just an I- iconic piece. But the older one, if you went back to early 90s, was the same as that, but with the black bezel. But they then brought out a newer version, yeah, which we'll move on to. Um, yeah. There we go. That's the Starbucks. Mm. Okay, I'm yeah. going to leave you to tell me why that's the Starbucks. Is this the exact green hue it's very similar of the branding it's the exactly so that there is the 126610 lv that came out in september 2020 that is the starbucks so that superseded the hulk so that there is a black dial with a green bezel and that's ceramic on the earlier models we were talking about these bezels get damaged quite easy because yeah. they're aluminium so oh, okay. if you would like to have a look at that that's the hulk Uh, Hulk smash! <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so that piece there was yeah. superseded with the 126610 LV. So that model there has the green dial and green bezel, and the oh, later yeah. me- the that. later model had the black dial with the green bezel. So when um, you say bezel, just to clarify that, that's the outer ring. <clears throat> yeah. But that is, I mean, everyone loves that piece now because it's been discontinued, like you said. And what happens when they're discontinued? Price goes up. There we go. Supply and demand. But the new one, the Starbucks, equally very popular and a question I'm often asked. I mean, I'm going to ask you actually, How Alex. How much are they worth? What, what do you think? Out the, what do you prefer out the two? So this one's the Starbucks, this one's the Kermit. So the Kermit there goes back. The Kermit's 2007. That was the anniversary. Yeah. Prefer- so that is the old model. And then you've got the Hulk, which is the green dial and green bezel. And the 2020 model is the Starbucks with the black dial and green bezel. Okay, so my least favourite is the Kermit. I just, I'm not a big fan of that that tint of green. Nope. Um, <laughs> but actually the, the bezel on, on these two is the same colour. Yes, same colour. It's the exact same. But I prefer the Hulk because I like the green, the green, and the green. green face. Yeah. Every, I think it's beautiful. I mean, people went crazy for that and now they're continuing. They're still going crazy because it's discontinued. So how much would this go for then? Those are generally, those are trading now at anywhere between about 14 and 18,000 pounds. Wow. But list when they were running was about seven seven fifty. When it was discontinued... They went up to £20,000, the new unused ones. And that's something people like to do. They like to buy a new unused, put them away in the safe and and just do nothing with them. So am I right in saying that often people will buy a super expensive watch and then they won't actually wear the super expensive watch. They'll They'll just wear the decoy. Am I right in saying that? I've heard that a couple of times. That's correct, right? Well, people, some people buy watches and wear them, and some people buy watches and just put them in the safe and wait for the values to go up. But they'll have a fake of, they'll have a, a fake version of the yeah, real one, some, right? Yeah, some people do I think that. I would do that, I'd be too scared to because wear it. Because they're scared and they feel that if something happens, at least they lose, but then they never wear the real one. Yeah, so it's kind of pointless That's having it. Exactly. So the watch that I really like, which is the watch that when I worked for you, I had my eye on and you didn't. I, I think right. you, I let, me, you think let me try it on. Pearlmaster, wasn't it? The Pearlmaster, the Rolex Pearlmaster. Yeah. That, was, that was my... And then I found, I found like a... It wasn't a fake, but it was like a, a really cheap version. There's a brand called Daniel Dion. Yes. <laughs> they yeah. did. When I was at the jewellery fair, I found that, that brand and the, the watch was literally the exact same. Yeah. But just well, a lot brand. of the brands copy Rolex. It. They make a model similar that's not in precious metal and maybe in steel. Yeah, it discolored quite quickly. Yeah. <laughs> or DKNY. DKNY make things like that. Absolutely. 
But that was worth 20,000. Yeah. So, but they What range. metal was that at the time, the one you liked? That was, was that gold. the yellow or the... That was yellow, yellow yeah. Gold. yeah I'm, gold. A, I'm a yellow gold fan. Yellow gold. And mm. um, we've got some others here. We have Batman. <laughs> and for you, Alex, <laughs> we also have Batgirl. Batgirl. <laughs> I don't know what she does. I've not seen the film, but... I assume it was something like that. So Batman was the first one there with the oyster <laughs> bracelet. And then they launched... Wait, sorry, this is the oyster. This one in your left hand. Oh. That's the oyster bracelet with okay. the three links across. And then they launched what was referred to with the Jubilee bracelet. So that was launched a few years ago. And again, nothing to do with Rolex, but that bracelet was more a girl's bracelet. So in the... As it as people describe them, it's referred to as Batgirl. But who yeah. just like, like I do not look at this and think <laughs> Batman or Batgirl. No, and you will find nothing on Rolex's branding that calls them Batman or Batgirl. And nothing that would hint nothing towards whatsoever. it. But everyone know people who know their watches will often call up and say, "Have you got a Batman?" And that is the one with the oyster bracelet. And then we've got the Batgirl. And that bracelet was hugely unpopular. Years ago, that bracelet, this this that this bracelet one. used to go here on the Jubilee on the GMT, and whenever we got a GMT in with a Jubilee bracelet, you said, "Oh, never going to sell that." <laughs> no one wanted it, but then they've revamped it. You know what it's like? It's like the flares from the seventies will be coming back in ten years' time, but now oh. everyone loves that bracelet. I don't want to break it. <laughs> They're quite hard to open, aren't they? They're quite. Ah, uh, it's just you get used to it. But what's nicer with this? It's really we'll complete the look. Yeah, there we go. So that's the Bat <laughs> Girl. The Bat Girl for the Bat Girl. There we go. See. You feel it's quite comfy. It's just very soft. There's a lot of detail in that bracelet. Yeah, it's but cool. it's become it's cool. huge. It People cool. who Pull never wanted the Jubilee bracelet now love that. And did they do it in gold, or is it just? Just this colour. Um, it is only it comes, silver? They call this silver. It only comes in steel. Oh, it's stuck. Can't get it off. I'm going to have to keep it. <laughs> have to keep it for the next one. one other one. Whilst we're on that, this is a stunning piece. That's the wow. eye of the tiger. <laughs> I mean, that is certainly eye catching. How much does this go for? That is over a hundred. You can't. First of all, you can't get it. Wait, it sorry. Would... Wait. Don't. Don't. <laughs> over what? <laughs> over a hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> Yeah. What was it? But, what, what, but not but only that, not only that, you can't get it. The retail price, I think, is about eighty-eight thousand. Okay. But there's a wait list. You've got to be on a special list and be a special customer from Rolex to get that. We got that for a good customer of ours. We sourced it for them, and I'm often asked on the show. People have asked me in the past, "Can you? I'd like to buy one. Can't get it. So even if you had the money, you can't." So it's not how easy. many of these have been made? Not sure. It's quite a short supply of those. There weren't that many. I mean, they're still made, but they don't make that many of them. And all of these are all real that's diamonds. All diamonds. All real diamonds. <laughs> and this is real, real gold. Yeah, and that's real rubber as well. The rubber's real. <laughs> now that must be the expensive part. That then. is the expensive that... part. The diamonds <laughs> and gold are cheap. It's just the rubber that's difficult. <laughs> um, but no, it's a stunning piece. It really is. It really is. How easy do these scratch then? If this is because gold is a soft that's metal. Gold. That's gold. But that can be polished. That's no big deal. Yeah. How much would it cost to get this polished? Um, it's not so much the work to get it polished. It's the risk involved in polishing mm. it. That's the thing. It'll be four or five hundred pounds or something like that. If that's I could just get, pocket but a lot of people wouldn't want like to. They wouldn't want to touch it with something that because of the risk. But you just wouldn't want to wear this. Like no. if you had this, no. when when would you wear it? Probably when you're on the final table. Of <laughs> no, I think you'd want to what you'd want to look no, as but that would give away. as possible. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. No, I'd be too scared piece. to wear this. I'd, I'd probably fr I'd put it in like a crystal box. It should go in a little like case. Put it. Yeah. I don't know somewhere really yeah. safe. And for the last piece there, Alex, that is the root beer. Mm. Yeah, just again with the black, the brown, the chocolate, the rose. Yeah, it's chocolatey. Um, QVC advert. <laughs> <laughs> and we, here's one we had earlier. Um, I couldn't even tell you with that. The root beer, just the colouring of root beer, that's what it's been referred to. So is this rose gold? That's rose gold and mm -hmm. steel. And how much does this one go for? That watch is 11850 Is that retail. it? 
Yes. It's a bit, it's a bit of a poverty you watch. <laughs> in comparison to the eye of the tiger, yeah, absolutely. everything kind of pales now. So that is part of the Batman family. So that's the same as the Batman, but in the bimetal. They don't. They do that in yellow gold, yellow and steel, and that's the rose and steel, which is the root beer. So then you have the Batgirl, which is the same model, just in steel on the Jubilee bracelet. We'll, def- we'll get you up to speed, Alex. You'll yeah, no, start- I'm learning, I'm learning. Yeah, you start to understand, and then you can take over the show, and I won't have to come <laughs> to work. So, Alex, maybe next time, when we get the World Poker Tour going, we'll do a road show where we'll travel out to Vegas, and we'll have watches for all the people in the World Poker Tour. Yeah, I bet they'd love that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, so what sort of things have you seen there? In term- Are they mainly Rolex people, or more blingy Blingy pieces? Or? It's most, well, the photographer that goes on tour with us in, in the European tour, he's very much attracted. He's like a magpie, so he'll always photograph the really blingy ones. Mm. And obviously, you know what a poker hall is like. There's like hundreds of people. Like. So it's the only real times I ever see the watches on the pictures. And always, it's always these kind of flashy ones. Sure, and, set with diamonds. But then and... you never know if they're real or fake. Mm. This is the thing. That's the thing in Vegas, isn't it? Yeah, but they, they make such good fake ones now. Mm. Like, how would you not? That's, that's a question. How do you, like, as an expert, some of the well, really good fake ones, how do you actually distinguish? It depends on the piece. It depends on the piece. On some, there are some amazing fakes. And every watch with us is checked by a watchmaker. Um, but there are some amazing. And so, what do they do? They, do they unpick it to look at the mechanism? They look, the, they look at the movement. There are some telltale signs, signs on certain things when something's not quite right. Is that secret? Is it these secret telltale signs not, that only experts are allowed to know? Not really. It's you know what it is. People have often asked me this. It's comparing with the real thing. If you if you didn't have something original to compare to, it's very difficult to mm. know what's not right. But when you have an original. I mean, the, these items are fortunes. They're more than cars with some of these. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're looking for quality that's at the highest level. And that's what sort of helps you distinguish whether something's real or not. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of work. Hell of a lot of work in these. So an interesting question for the watch expert himself, the watch guy himself, should I say. You could have any watch in the world. Money's no object. Money doesn't mean a thing. You could have anything. Genie comes down, grants you this. Wow. Even if it doesn't exist, and you could describe your perfect watch. That Tell is us. really putting me on the spot there. I think money no object today, I would go for a platinum Daytona. I think it's just absolute class. A classic. A classic platinum date. That's that's the platinum piece with the blue dial. Very mm. unstated. People only know because of the dial. I think it's a stunning piece. And how much does that go for? Um, retail, I think about sixty-three thousand pounds. Wow! But again, something you can't get. Wow! Yeah. For something that simple as well. Mm. Gosh, I guess it is platinum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Alex, absolute pleasure. Great having you on the show today. Nice to bring something different here. Really <laughs> nice having you, and looking forward to having you again. No, thank you so much for having me on. It's been a, it's been a real it's been a real pleasure today, and I would absolutely love to come back. Okay, thank you. If you've enjoyed today's episode and you would like to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, download the podcast, give us a like, maybe leave us a comment on YouTube where you can, and we'll see you next time. Bye.